Red light therapy has been touted as the miracle cure to aging in the 21st century. I mean, people have been talking about it all over the internet, saying it is the quantum leap that we have been all waiting for. You can see kind of the devices that are related to red light therapy are expensive, right? Getting a face mask or a full body panel could cost you upwards of thousand, two thousand dollars. Is that worth it? Is it really this kind of miracle medicine that everybody talks about or is it just a fad? The truth is it's a little bit of both. It's a complex answer and that's what I'm going to dive into. I'm going to dive into my results using red light therapy for the last six months as a doctor. Hi, my name is Manik Madan. I am a resident doctor based in the US and I make videos about using technology to make yourself limitless. Diving into red light therapy, what is red light therapy? Red light therapy is a type of photobiomodulation, which means it's using light to change your biology. And what it does is you're taking a specific spectrum out of the whole light. So if you look at the sunlight, right, it has different kinds of light in it. There's UV light, then there's blue light, and then there's red light, near infrared light, far infrared light within that sun spectrum. All of these lights have a specific wavelength and based upon that specific wavelength they can either penetrate your body or not penetrate your body these wavelengths also give these lights different powers for example if you look at uv light while it can cause cancer it also stimulates vitamin d production which is important for your body on the other hand blue light helps with acne but red light out of all of them is probably the most beneficial light of all because it can actually penetrate your body along with near infrared light. It has three mechanisms of action. The number one is when red light and near infrared light penetrate your body, they go within your tissues and activate these organelles called mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. In other words, it's the battery of the cell. So when you activate the mitochondria, you're actually kind of giving that battery a boost, allowing every cell in the body to work better. And guess what? This energy is required by each and every cell in your body from your immune cells to your skin cells, to your heart, to your muscles. Every cell in your body for each and every function requires energy. And so red light just allows every cell to get more of that energy, which leads to its beneficial effects. For example, if we look at the fibroblasts, which make collagen and elastin in your skin, red light therapy stimulates the fibroblasts and causes more collagen elastin production which gives you that tensile look not only that if you have any hyperpigmentation on your skin or there's any kind of solar damage because of not using sunscreen red light therapy can stimulate macrophages to erase that damage or rewrite that genetic code because it stimulates certain pathways there as well through mitochondria via this thing called retrograde signaling so when you are activating mitochondria they also react with the dna to change or rewrite your epigenetic code which kind of takes away the hyperpigmentation the solar damage that is going away with red light therapy it also decreases cellulite production based on that and that is the main mechanism with the skin the second mechanism is hormesis hormesis is a phenomena which implies that whenever you are exposed to a sub lethal dose of a toxin that causes you to get stronger an example of a hormetic stressor is exercise when you're exercising you're actually kind of producing damage in your body these reactive oxygen species these tears which causes the body to produce an adaptive response to get stronger build muscle make sure that you live longer similar hormetic stressors are saunas or oxygen deprivation cold hormesis fasting hormesis or other stressors which causes the body to get stronger Initially, we used to think that aging was all tied to antioxidants, which is kind of not true because that field of research, giving people antioxidants to reverse aging uh, has not given us the best results in research. But what has actually given us the best results is the hormesis part of red light therapy, where it kind of stresses out your mitochondria, which causes reactive oxygen species production. And this causes the body to build more antioxidants within itself. So it increases the body's antioxidant production rather than relying on external antioxidants. So this allows the body to cope with more damaging stress, aging stress. The third way red light therapy works is by increasing nitric oxide within your cells. So when red light therapy goes inside your mitochondria, it displaces nitric oxide from this enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. And this nitric oxide now goes into your blood vessels, causes dilation within those blood vessels, and this causes increased nutrients to go into your skin. So these are the three ways red light therapy works. Now, 
Remember I talked about whether red light therapy is a fad or not? It is a fad if you buy the wrong device because a lot of devices on the market claim to do uh, many things that they just cannot. And I'll kind of clarify how that works. So mostly if you look at very cheap devices or devices where you don't see any specifications or many people haven't reviewed it, you should be very careful when they describe benefits that device doesn't have. I would actually err on the side of more expensive devices, more reviewed, more tested devices, because you're putting your money somewhere you're not gonna go wrong with better quality devices, which I'm gonna talk about in a while. The device that I personally use is by Illuminate LED. And this device is like a flexible LED panel. And I'll go into how this works. So how do you decide on a device? Whenever you're buying a device, you should look for five criteria, which I'll talk to you about my own panel as well that I've been using for the last six months. The first criteria that you should look at is the wavelength. Each wavelength of light has different actions like I've talk to you before and there are certain spectrums of red light that are more beneficial for certain actions than not for example if you want skin benefits of red light the 660 nanometer spectrum is the most studied and that is what you should look for if you want clinical grade improvement other spectrums can have some benefits but 660 nanometer is the one up there according to research however let's say you want cognitive benefits right well 1070 nanometer spectrum of nir is what is required for that if you want let's say muscular benefits well what you would require is something like 830 nanometers so different spectrums of red light work for different conditions if you're looking just at facial red light therapy which i'm talking about right now um, I think 660 nanometers is the one to go and that is what my own panel has. Second thing to look for is what is called as power density. Power density is measured in milliwatts per centimeter square. So how much milliwatts of energy is being delivered per square centimeter of your skin. So the more the power density, the more the penetration depth of that light, the, the stronger the light is. In red light therapy, the optimal power density that we're looking for is somewhere between 30 to 100. And especially if you're looking at anti-aging benefits, we want to err on the side of the lower power density than really high power density, but we still want it to be high enough. 30 milliwatts to 50 milliwatts is what seems to be the best as at least for skin if, if you go too high the problem is you could cause heating issues and you could cause certain breakouts whenever you're looking at really really high power densities like 100 or something that's more for muscular benefits and not for as much as anti-aging benefits so for me my panel has like 30 milliwatts per centimeter square which is an optimal power density it does the job it goes deep enough into my skin and that's what i require uh, for anti-aging facial benefits. I don't want it to go deeper and it's high enough to have that penetration depth, but it's not high enough to cause any kind of damage or, you know, not give me that effect. The third thing that we're looking for in a red light therapy device is what we call as the dose. So dose is basically power density into time and that determines how much of a dose your body is getting. And this is measured in joules per centimeter square. The optimal dose for anti-aging red light therapy is somewhere between 3 to 15 joules per centimeter square. If you're looking at something like getting deeper benefits, then we go higher from like 10 to 40, right? But for this video, 3 to 15 is the optimal range. My own panel has about 5 joules per centimeter square, which is again good enough. You don't want way too high of a dose to stimulate anti-aging benefits. Five seems to do the job in most research. The fourth one is total dosing, which is dose into surface area of the device. So for me, that is five into 1,200, which is like the total surface area for my Illuminate LED panel. That is about 6,000 joules. And it gives me that in about five minutes. And that is the recommended time. Further on, looking at power density and dose, they also determine how much time you would need to use that light. For example, if the device is very low powered, has a very low power density, very low dosing, that would cause you to use it for a way longer time. For example, if something is like 10 milliwatts per centimeter square versus a device that is 30 milliwatts per centimeter square, the 10 milliwatts per centimeter square, you might need to use it for 30 minutes to 60 minutes, while the 30 milliwatts per centimeter square, you might just need to use it for five minutes in a week. Moving on to the fifth parameter that many people don't consider is the number of LEDs. Why does the number of LEDs matter? Number one, 
the more the number of LEDs, the higher the surface area you are covering on your face. So many panels that you would have seen like from Omnilux or other devices, they only cover certain parts of the face and they leave out like your ears, leave out certain parts of your hair, which could have benefited from the red light therapy. And that's because they have limited number of LEDs, which is 300. My own device has like 1,800 LEDs, which is insane. So that allows for a bigger surface area and bigger like treatment zone for me. Secondly, the higher the number of LEDs, the more homogeneous and the more uniform the power density is on your face. If you look at a panel which has 300 LEDs which is versus a panel which has 1,800 LEDs, if we assume that the surface area for both the devices is the same, the one with the higher number of LEDs actually ensures a more uniform effect because each LED is closer. Thirdly, having no higher number of LEDs allows you to give less power to each LED, which extends the lifespan of that LED. Uh, versus uh, a device, let's say, which has 300 or 200 LEDs, there each LED is higher power to allow for the optimal dosing, but that also causes it to lose a lot on its lifespan. And I, I think you would be not oblivious to many people talking about their device, their only Lux device not working anymore after six months of use. So you have to be very careful. The higher number of LEDs, the more the chances that device is going to live longer. Moving on to my experience, my six months experience with my panel. So again, I'm using the Illuminate LED panel and this is the industrial grade standard which every device has to compete against. It's a bit expensive, of course, but I wanted the best for me and I wanted this investment to go big. So this is also used in SPA and they recommend using it once a week. You could use it twice a week, thrice a week. It's up to you based upon how much you can handle it. For example, somebody can handle exercise for seven days a week versus somebody who can handle exercise for three days a week. It depends on that. It also depends whether you're a beginner or an advanced. For me, I'm using it about twice a week at max. But when I was starting with it, I was using it once a week. So that is a change and I'm only using it for five minutes per session, which is not a lot. And this is because it delivers like 6,000 joules in just five minutes and, and I'm done, right? So, so that's a great thing. If you're getting a panel, what should be the dosing you should be looking at? Well, it depends upon the manufacturer. And also please realize that you could go away from that dosing based upon how you are. Some people recommend the frequency of twice a day with a body panel to like twice a week. So it all depends upon you. A good guide to learn about this is Ari Wheaton's Complete Guide to Red Light Therapy if you want to look at dosing and how to dose it for certain benefits. And also it depends upon how many inches you are away from the device. So a lot is taken into account for me. Like I talked about before, I'm using it five minutes at a time, twice a week. My results wise, what I've noticed in the last six months is uh, the first thing you, you've seen in my skin is like it's shiny. It has this glowy, glassy look to it. And I've been told by multiple people like, what the hell are you doing to your skin? <laughs> What's going on there? Yeah, so this is the effect of red light therapy on my face. Secondly, what I've also noticed is there were certain areas of pigmentation here. If you watched my previous video, which have completely disappeared and that is insane. They were basically caused by me not wearing sunscreen, were basically part of solar damage and like my face is completely wiped off them. So I'm pretty happy with that. Thirdly, my face also feels more taut, youthful, I guess. Fourthly, I have noticed that some of my scars have become less deeper, although I would say that they haven't completely disappeared. Uh, I am looking into avenues like micro needling to take out these scars because some people report that if you have scars that can be treated with micro needling, they'll go away. So I'm going to try micro needling it. But yes, that has been a bit disappointing that the scars don't go away. Maybe it's because it needs a more intensive invasive intervention. Fifthly, I have noticed some cognitive benefits like my brain fog lifting off, processing speed getting faster, ability to learn getting faster with the 660 nanometer spectrum. If you go and look into research, it has been correlated with higher cognitive performance compared to other light spectrums. So that is one of the benefits I accidentally found in the device. Sixthly, I will also say that my beard is more denser. So I have this thing called alopecia areata, which causes certain spots in my beard. And uh, like there, there were times when I had that before I did red eye therapy where there'll be certain spots absent in my be beard. It's gone now. So you can see like my beard is much more fuller, much more better. 
honestly red light therapy has changed my life in so many ways and i hope it does that for you if you want a device i personally use the illuminate led and i would recommend the same it's by this company called illuminate led they manufacture these panels for spas and medical facilities and because of that these are industry grade and that's why they can be expensive so this panel that i'm currently using it's quite flexible and thin i can just pack it with me and put it in my suitcase and take it everywhere and by the way i have tested this out i've stressed it i have once like stepped on it nothing bad happens to it it's just so strong this panel essentially has 1200 uh, centimeter square of surface area which covers about my whole face it has 1800 leds which gives you like the 6000 joules of the total dose in just five minutes so yeah pretty amazing of a panel if you can afford it go ahead with it it's an amazing one all right guys if you enjoyed this video consider subscribing and let me know in the comments what you would like to watch next